behind me. Wow, I got, I really got to make a cup of coffee, you guys. Oh, I didn't have one yet. It is 7.15 or so. I'm blinded by my flash on, on my uh, camera there. Um, it is 7.16 in the morning, kiddos. Um, so, yeah, I finally got a little bit much needed sleep. So, uh, I just said forget about trying to upload yesterday's. I think what had happened was instead with these vlog, vlogs are meant like a, a vlogs pre a vlog is primarily meant to be a real quick thing, you know, so... Uh, well, I don't know if you know, but it's meant to be a quick check-in type thing. I believe that's the purpose of a vlog, a quickie vlog, you know. But uh, there, I just said it again, you know. Um, so, I had added a bunch of clips together and then saving it. And I saved it underneath the wrong filing, so I had to redo it. And then by the time, by morning turned into evening and so I just gave up so we just start over uh, I put in some oh my god this is so good my husband finally tried it yesterday put some ice cream in my coffee so so good uh, just a little bit mmm yeah, you guys, um, so, praise God for our fallen soldiers for Memorial Day, and it's to celebrate in remembrance of them, and our fallen ones, and it, even... Service members that are still here, I acknowledge them on Memorial Day because Memorial Day is in remembrance of what they did for us, for fighting for us, for our freedoms and our lives. And so, and, um, my uncles, two, uh, two of my uncles fought in the service, um, and some of my cousins fought in the service. I didn't fight in the service, but I wanted to. I wanted to go in the service. Um, I signed up for the Army Reserves and because I was just going to go into the reserves. Um, I would have been the first female in my family to do something like that, but I ended up getting pregnant with my oldest daughter at 16 and had her at 17, so... Yeah, I also had a scholarship for study of sciences at univer. I got it for University of Michigan, and from university to go to university at University of Michigan because I was going to go into the field of science. Primarily, I wanted to do archaeology, uh, Egyptology, and yeah, but. God had other plans in store for me, obviously. And that's with the uh, poor decisions I made. Abby. She's not a poor decision. None of my children are. But I'm just saying, thinking I knew it all and thinking I was old enough to have sex when I was a teen. <laughs> you know? Being irrational. That's irrational. And so, but... 
Yeah, I'm glad my life went that route, so. But I need to take this off. I don't care what my hair looks like. I don't care. So, uh, I put my hair up in some clippy doos. So, yeah, I want to, I really want to start being more consistent. But there, there's going to be times, I'm going to hope that there's not, there's going to be times that I may pull a disappearing act. And not that I want to, it's because of, I think I'm crooked. It's because of things that I deal with health-wise. You know, the physical pain... If you're a chronic pain sufferer, then you know, you know, <laughs> it's too hard to deal with things, but as time goes on, it gets worse, it affects my mental health worse, and it's just, it just, it's like I'm not here mentally when that's happening. I'm in bed crying and begging God, I guess, to let me die. That's what I've been told by my husband. So, I mean, it's it's so bad, you guys, that you can't even touch me like this without it sending me into severe agony. It's bad. I don't like it. I don't like being like this. But, yeah, so there's going to be times... The past almost week now has been phenomenal. I mean, I have been having achy pains here and there, and the pain doesn't completely dissipate, okay? But then there's times where something just happens where it's the pain hurts so bad, and it just it takes over my life. It, it's horrible. And, you know, it really hurts because, as mental wise, because when I'm open and honest with people about this and they don't care, they're, they care only about themselves and want you to still be there with them. So, I mean, for a while there, my husband... Would, it's it can be a struggle with my husband. He forgets, and I don't. It's it's like how can you forget? Um, hopefully he doesn't forget what ha what I go through. Um, a lot of times he's here and he takes care of me, but especially since we were just stuck together twenty four hours a day for a few months. Hopefully he doesn't forget and where it becomes an issue and I am called a lazy piece of shit. That's, that's abusive. I'm in love with my husband, but that's abusive. I mean, I'm not, I can't give him an excuse for doing that because it's 100% wrong. And forgetting, I truly believe that he does forget. Um, but I, I can try to give him, try to make it a little bit excusable because he does work extremely hard, and then he'll come home and clean and cook if I'm not able to. And more times than not, I'm not able to. But I'll go through stages. It's, um, it's like my mania kicks in, and... Uh, I just, I, I wish I could always be manic like that, but having my manic episodes like that, when I come down, I come down hard. It sucks, but it was so good. So, so good. Oh, I could have used a, a little more chocolate. A little more scoopage of ice cream. Um, but... Yeah, so, oh my gosh, we were walking on the way back from the doctors, and, you know, I know I have a lot of issues I need to work on in my past, especially having PTSD, um, 
things will happen and it will send me into a defensive mode and it's like I explained to my husband, it's like a TV screen that goes in my, I, that, it's like a TV in my head where there's flashes of pictures, the flashbacks um, of things that are similar that have happened to me in my past and they happened this morning. Um, we were at a stoplight after leaving the clinic and this car full, uh, with four people in it pull up, look grown. Two for sure. I saw the faces. They look like my, my age. They looked in their forties, but if they're only in their like twenties or something like 20 or 21, cause I could be wrong. If they're only like that and they're looking that rough, they need to lay off the pipes. <laughs> but because my husband thought it was younger people, but I, I'm most positive the driver for sure looked like my age, 42. Four, about, I'm 42. He looked 40. And then the girl looked 40. So... But, so anyways, they pull up on the side of us and point, well, it, the, there was four of them in the car, pulled up on the side of us at the light, pointed, and <laughs> to me and my husband. And it made me so angry. See, I go on a snap reaction, on a snap judgment, and I don't think before I respond. And because that's what happens with my PTSD. I can only speak for myself and what I go through. But when something similar happens in my life now as an adult who's gone through a lot of shit, this situation reminded me of when I, I'll tell you, I was 14 years old. I almost started crying about it when I was talking to my husband. Um, there's a lot. I just recently started telling him things that happened to me at school. Um, so when I was 14 years old, it had been Easter break and my grandma, my mother, my grandma Shaw, my mom's mom, my mother, my dad, and I, uh, for a week vacation right after Easter, we would always go down south. We would hit like uh, the different uh, states and visit Tennessee and go to Florida. Uh, the one year we went to Louisiana, I think this is the year that we had went to Louisiana. Nolens. Uh I think it is. I really think it is. It's weird. Um, I'm thinking that. Uh, but so anyways, I had a terrible time in school. I should sit down and share with uh, you uh, my experience in school. It was so bad that it caused me to drop out. Um, yeah, so, but anyways, not from this particular situation. There were many factors, many different situations why I ended up dropping out of school. That's another story for a different time. So, yeah, so, uh, the kids were horrendous to me as it was, and it sucked. Um, elementary school was fine, and then it's like, we cross over into middle school and uh, kids from other uh, surrounding uh, elementary schools, we all ended up going to the same middle school and high school together. Um, and yeah, I had a lot of friends through elementary school, but as soon as middle school hit, things changed. The girl that was my best friend, things changed with her. and. These new kids and stuff, I don't know what happened. It's like some of the new kids saw me and just, I was a target or something. I don't know. 
Um, they, yeah, I just, I don't know, but things had changed and it's, it's still, I'm 42 years old. It still affects me. The stuff I still carry and I can't help that. I try to work on it and I keep, I will keep working on it, but it's really hard. Um, but, and so anyways, it didn't help that I started developing in fourth, fifth grade. Um, it might have been sooner than that. But, so anyways, but in sixth grade, I had a size D chest. <laughs> so, and that didn't go over well. So that's a, that's a factor. It's not right that they did that. But I mean, I they I, they thought I had stuffed my chest or or something, or it was just terrible. I would be poked with pencils in my breast. Boys would come up and squeeze my breast to hear if there was tissue in there. Um, just horrifying things happen. Um, so, anyways, that's when shit hit the fan. As soon as I hit sixth grade, and because my elementary school went from kindergarten to fifth grade and then you got the middle school sixth seventh eighth and then the high school nine through twelve so i was was it the eighth eighth grade eighth grade it's like i'm thinking it was seventh grade but I'm like thinking it was eighth grade. Anyways, I know I was about 14 years old. So I was already having a hell of a time at school. And then we went to Florida and I ended up getting severely burned. And so yeah, I looked like a lobster. Um, in the mornings at my middle school, We had to wait in the stairwell, and I can't remember if it was just my grade, or it, I think it might have just been all the grades, but there were a few hundred kids in there. Um, it was like the whole school... It was the whole, it was just the whole school. I have some, a lot of bully stories to share with you. It's just like beyond like, I mean, bully is being abused. If you bully somebody, you abuse, you're abusing them. But it's just like, so anyways, it felt like the whole school at least. Um, so I wonder if any of those bitches remember that they did that to me. The one incident they should, and I, I'll share that some other time. I had a horror, a horrible trick pulled on me. It was terrible. Um, but so anyways, I walk in and it was like everyone's head turned and looked at me and pointed and ha 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 ha. And two, it didn't help that I was the last one getting into school. I was late. I never wanted to be the first one there. And I didn't want to be the last. I wanted to not be seen and not be heard. Um, but yeah, so what I'm trying to say is that happening... The way these people were pointing and laughing at us this morning, it was exactly, it took me back to that. So maybe me acknowledge, I've never really come forward and told people things that have happened to me in school, except for my counselors. Um... So maybe if I'm, I, I share my stories with you, I can start a healing, beginning to heal. Um, I want you to know right now that, yeah, I should do a, 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 a video 
explaining what my channel is about exactly what my outlet what my part of the inner my little part of the internet world is about um what i'm gonna say right now is not everything's gonna be roses okay and i there's gonna be times where i'm going to be sharing things with you and it may be hurtful things um so you're free to go or you can say and maybe there's things that you need to work on too that from your past or things that you're going through and we can work on these things together you know we can begin a healing process together um yeah so and then it's like i was so angry um i started like blacking out because i did have a horrendous reaction um it just, I don't stop and think first. I respond. I react immediately. But so what I did was I yelled and flipped them off. I gave them the bird. I said, are you effing serious? F you. How dare you? So then they hurried up and sped off when the light turned and my husband's like honey chill out and I was gonna leave it at that but what I just told you I opened up to him I thought I had told him about my incident and in this in that time that incident in the stairwell there was a few incidents in the stairwell um but yeah and so I broke down and I told him. And then I'm like, I'm really sorry for not being able to control myself. I really couldn't control myself. Um, which is part of a bor having borderline personality disorder too. You, you just immediately do things without thinking. And without thinking how the consequences are going to affect anyone. So, but... Then he's like, oh, honey, okay, I understand, and you don't have to apologize. And I, I kept apologizing to him all the way on the way back here. But so the funny thing is I had paid attention, I was paying attention to where their car was um, going, and I had noticed they had pulled in by a Starbucks that's in a, a little tiny plaza over here, and I didn't say anything to my husband. I was just so angered and, and just it, it affected me. And like I said, it brought up memories from when I was a kid. You don't treat people like that, especially adults. What is wrong with you? So anyways, we um, were walking and as soon as we, because we're on this side of the street and the Starbucks is across the road. They were... The car was trying, the car full of people, and the driver was trying to be sneaky as all shit. He pulled out, and I saw him, and I looked over at him, and he saw me. And I said, oh, there you are. You're not going to, none of you are going to yell now, are you assholes? And he, he tilted his hat down like this. <laughs> and they were all, I saw it. They were all, they all like shrunk down in the car. So they knew, but my husband was like, honey, <laughs> again, and I said, no, Michael, you didn't see them. I said, the driver cowered down, so, but I mean, the type of person I am, and I have done, I may not, I may have a lot of work to do on my reactions as far as words. And allowing people to get to me to the point where I I got my my tongue, what comes out of my mouth is I'm I can be evil sounding. Um there's an evilness that comes out of me and it's a defensive evil. And it's I put my guard up, I put my defenses up because I'm not gonna allow anybody to treat me like that ever again. And the same thing. 
my loved ones or even strangers if I see them being mistreated. I'm not going to allow it. So I fly, I do fly off the handle because of things that have happened to me. And it even stems from outside of the things at school, too. Certain people that were in my life as an adult and abusing me. So it's like one cycle, one big cluster fuck of abuse. How much can somebody take, you know? Um, wow. I'm trying not to cry. I feel it coming on talking, but it's good to talk. Um, so, but, and, um, what was, see, I jumped from one thing to the next, but, I'm so tired now. Um, but, yeah. Oh, so I'm the type of person how I used to be. This is how I used to be. This I have changed. I will never physically harm somebody unless I they are attacking me physically. Then I will defend myself. Um, but I used to be the type of person like 10 years ago, if this ha incident happened 10 years ago, maybe even five years ago, I'll admit that. Um, well, since me and him have been together almost 10 years next year, he helps me to hold back. He helps to keep me back, reserve my husband. But what I'm trying to say is this incident and what they did, I would have allowed it to cause me to open up his car door and pull one of them out and beat the hell out of him. I'm just being honest and I know that's not Christ-like and I hope Christ can forgive me for things that I've done in my past out of defense. That's the excuse that I can use. Does it make it right? Absolutely not. You should never harm anyone. But what I'm trying to say is, this situation that happened to us, there's people that I know that would uh, pull the kid out, or the adult, not kid, he was grown, my, I swear, he looked my age, I, I know I'm repeating myself, but there are people that would have pulled him out for attacking a car full of people laughing and attacking a couple walking, or uh, standing at a stoplight, you know what I mean? Some may even do it to the extreme. Some may pull out a, a weapon of some sort and because some are going to feel, you know what, you're not going to treat me like that. Because there's plenty of people on our earth that do things in a snap, poor judgment. So, but, yeah. Yeah, definitely 10 years ago, I would have opened up that door and somebody would have been coming out of that door. But I don't do things like that anymore. Like I said, I will only physically defend myself if I have to because somebody is physically causing harm to me or one of my loved ones. So, or I'm serious, or a stranger too. We don't play that. So, you guys, I'm going to try not to let that ruin my day. And I'm going to finish my coffee. And I just wanted to share along with uh, my check-in. If that makes sense. Okay, my beautiful friends. I will talk to you all later. I don't know what I'm going to do right now. It's so humid again, but... Okay, guys.